Oh, I think we got it. I think we got her. I think, I think, I think, I think. Okay, good morning guys at Mission Control. Here's what I thought of last night. So I was in, laying in bed and my brain was on. Ever happened to you? I, it's hard for me to fall asleep because I start chewing through all the problems, connecting all the dots, trying to solve everything, right when I'm trying to go to sleep, of course. The bed appears to be level because we leveled it. And we checked the level a few times. And I was like, oh, you know, something's wrong. I think the frame maybe is a little bit off. So I came out here and checked and we were good right here on this side, everything's level. Here, we're on the bubble, but this corner could come up a little bit. Over here, it was it's off quite a bit. The rear corner back there needs to come up quite a bit. But then I started thinking, you know what, but the uh, print head and the bed are all relative to each other. So um, if there's a slight slant there, that is everywhere. It, it doesn't change. So what I did is I got the tape out. In a previous video, I realized I said, I don't have a metric measuring tape. And then I was like, wait a second, what's on the other side? Oh yeah, that's called centimeters and millimeters. Duh. Things you don't use very often, right? Uh, you think you don't have. So anyway, I came in here and I'm measuring everything relative to a certain point on the print bed relative to the access um, connector where the print bed actually connects to the motor drive assembly. and what the heat map was telling or the height map was telling us is that the back was lower than the front uh, and that this corner over here was high so sure enough when i started adjusting things with the tape uh, the back on both sides was high uh, or needed to come up excuse me it needed to come up uh, and the front needed to come down just a little bit on both corners so i've now adjusted everything and have got it measured uh, all of them relative to the same location. So we're gonna run the tilt calibration again, and then we're gonna run uh, the bed leveling again, and hopefully we get a better result. So I think I figured out something here. So let's look at this. Here's the dip right here, and, and at this point, the lowest on this side is 0.557, which according to when they did theirs, they, they were at 0.55 is an offset. So let's assume that that's fine. Here is where we have the issue. So it tilted a little bit. See that big line coming down there? Look at that thing. That's where we have, and it's a sharp drop off. Look, boom. So what could possibly give us that sharp of a drop off? That is our big question. So let's go look at the bed because I think I figured this out as well as an orientation issue. I think this is actually how it's oriented with this being the front and this being the back. I'm gonna tell you why, let me show you. All right, so on top of the aluminum you have installed, it's a, a PEI sheet, I think is what it's called. And uh, it's so that the plastic adheres but doesn't adhere too much. And I followed their instructions on putting it on, but this panel, the sheet is shifted this way compared to this one. And if the, the measurement, there's actually probably about half a millimeter in there because there's a clear lip. So when this thing is probing back there, can you get it back over that way? A wire got caught, son of a snitch. Ay. All right, yeah, that darn wire got caught right up in there. So we'll have to fix that. Um, this wire right here got caught up in here because the part, Ay, you guys can't see it. Oh, I am frustrated, okay. So this wire goes right here. It just got caught in the gears. Um, all right, well now you can see this though. Here's the offset right here. It's about a half inch offset. Um, I'm contemplating removing this from the bed and re-sticking it down, I think is the right thing to do because there's no, or I think I might be able to remove it and rotate the whole thing. That sounds better. And then we gotta fix that issue now, so. We're getting there, we're figuring it out. That's also gonna change my level in the middle here. But I think it'll have a significant impact on what we're doing. So we'll get that all lined up. Cause they were measured, their instructions say to measure this. We'll see what we can do. 
Now, if you do that, it's still in the wrong print location. It might be easier just to do this. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be easier just to remove the film. All right, going with the Aquanet here. I'm not getting a good, good result with anything else, so I'm gonna put that down and then clamp that. I just need a little stick, you know? A little stickiness, favorable once it starts drying. Just need some tackiness there to keep those edges down. It smells like a hair salon. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, I just cannot get that lip to bite. Who would ever thought that Aquanet would be so useful? It's actually extremely useful for 3D printing. If you have a glass bed, just lightly dust it with this stuff and you get really good adhesion. Easy to clean up to, a little bit of Windex on a glass bed with uh, Aquanet that you use, comes right up. Oh, still gotta fix that. Uh, wire that broke. So we're going to need a small butt connector on that one and some heat shrink. Okay. All right. Got our wire fixed. I uh, had some heat shrink. Uh, so got that all put together real nice. Pro even. Uh, let's do the uh, bed compensation again. All right. We just got done doing the calibration macro all right well let's see here we fixed the giant drop off yay so there's something happening right in the middle it's like the plates based on this the plates are angled in and that middle section is low the good news is we got rid of that super sharp drop off, but then we created this. There's a dip here. The top one's at 0 0.06, so we got the top almost nailed, but then we got this weird thing going on here. So here's the current thinking is, what's happening is there's a quarter of a millimeter slide this way, or slope, I should say, sloping down. So what I've done is I've loosened up this bolt here and I've pushed up on the back side. Uh, and now I have to get all the way to the back and do the same thing, which is gonna be entertaining for you guys. Boy, a quarter of a millimeter is not a lot. I'm gonna get out of here. And then what we got, oops, need that on. What we're gonna do is we're looking for a flat edge on the seam that goes right down the middle where the two plates meet. And we're looking to see if there's major offset. And it looks like there is. It looks like on my left, on this panel here, it's down by probably a quarter or so, maybe? A little millimeter, not a lot. I mean, hardly, hardly perceptible, but there. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tighten that one down a little. There's still a little gap there though. Really want that gap to be closed. So there's some screws underneath it here that we'll adjust. Alright, well, let's get her started again. And bed compensation algorithm. Go. And here we go. Oh, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. 
Oh boy, we, I think we just did it. Boy, that's so close. Oh, we are 58 thousandths of a millimeter off from being fine. What is happening here? We got that drop off again. Drop off on the side here. We're making big progress though. That was a big, 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 big jump. So where is that at? I mean, that thing's all the way over. It's like over in the middle of the freaking plate. You can't have a plate. That would be a bent plate. <laughs> all right, just did, what is it? Like my eighth tilt calibration in bed compensation. Oh, I think we got it. I think we got her. I think, I think, I think, I think. 0.645, we are under one millimeter. Yeah! That only took two days. Oh, <laughs> uh, that looks a lot better, okay. I wonder what that dip right there is though. That's just weird, because that's out in the middle of the, but it don't matter, we got it. We're done, we did it, it's there, it's complete. All right, now we need to do the Z calibration again for the new nozzle. All right, well, we just got everything fully calibrated now. Uh, again, I should say, but much more accurate this time around. Uh, I have just started the cube uh, program. So it's gonna uh, print another one of those small cubes for us. We're gonna see how well that does. We remember we've changed from the one millimeter nozzle to the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Um, you know, the only thing I'm really unhappy with is this is PEI sheeting. Uh, when I first put it on, it picked up some dirt right on the seam where the two plates come together. Uh, so we're, we're gonna need to order new sheeting and, and, and redo that. Uh, but with today's stuff uh, that we did, everything, we're, we're operational. We're back, we're back, we're ahead of where we were but we're not as good as we should be. So this thing's heating up, uh, nozzle's heating up, and we're gonna do this print and see how it turns out. Just got done printing the cube. Separate it easily. All right. So, um, let's see here, top layer. Turned out pretty nice. It looks like we got some gaps there, so a little bit of under extrusion. Bottom layer still has that stringiness to it, so we're gonna increase that extrusion. We're gonna do some of our panel tests coming up. The sides, well, those look pretty good, actually. A little lip down at the very bottom. Let's go compare it to the other cubes we've done. Ain't going too far, try to use our time a little more appropriately. We're gonna upload our next test file. Get that going. We're gonna be testing some more of these guys out try to compare it to this one, which turned out really nice. But here are the, so this is the cube we just did. All right. This, where's the one that has, this is the one we did before, and this one has a nice hump in it right here. Uh, it also was uh, missing some fill on the top, and the bottom was really, really uh, quite open. So here you can see the difference. This is, nozzle size and extrusion, which we're gonna play with. Uh, this cube comes from somebody else, they did the model. Uh, but in our test that we're doing right now, we'll play with this. But you can see the difference between the one millimeter and the eight millimeter here. Uh, significant difference. As far as the edges go, the edges on this are much more smooth. This one has quite a few ripples in it. Uh, so a lot better accuracy there. Compared to our .4 though, I think this is the 0.4, the very first one we did. It has an extremely smooth uh, lower surface and the top uh, is closed in all the way. You can see the difference there. This is just the smaller nozzle size, but we're gonna address that through extrusion percent and play with it like what we did in the previous uh, test with the one millimeter. I forget which one I did here, but you can see this one's kind of cattywampus. We got some layer separation. So what we did, all that leveling and everything, I should, I should probably mark it. Where'd it go? Here it is. Let's put a mark on it. All that leveling is definitely uh, paying off. So that's a 0.8. 
And where's our one with the hump? This is the one. One millimeter. There we go. All right, this guy here is the 0.4. I forget what this guy was. I think this is another 0.4. So, we'll see how the plate comes out. All righty here. Let's see what we got. Got a tight, tight bond. Well, it gets your hands nice and warm when you're working in there. Okay. Well, by golly. So let's compare here. This is our one millimeter. This is 0.8 millimeter. The bottom, this is the bottom right here. It looks really good. Better than the 10 or the one. The top, however, I think we're gonna accept this uh, as being okay. It is completely sealed. It looks like we have some over extrusion occurring here because I did crank up the extrusion value, which I can change on a per layer basis. Um, hard to kind of see there, maybe, that, but that looks not bad at all. Uh, I have to do some more research on that. But the top side of our print is actually a part that will never be seen. This is the side that will be seen and that looks really good. So I've taken uh, the grow wall, I have it at 50% scale. You know, this is full size right here. And again, what we're looking for are those separations. You can hear it, uh, everything separating. It's not bonded. If it was bonded to each other, if the layers were bonded, it wouldn't be doing that. Uh, these are, again, these are solid, really solid, really liking that. So we're gonna load this bad boy up here. Here we go. All right, according to Simplify 3D, uh, we have two hours and 34 minutes until this test print is completed. Uh, we will see how well it does. We'll keep an eye on the first few layers and uh, uh, that'll be it. And then we'll go back to a full size one. Well, we've gone through a lot with this printer, getting everything calibrated. Uh, this next test is gonna be a big one. Uh, so far, everything's looking better than what it was when we did the one millimeter, but we really haven't spanned any large distance yet. So I wanna do the 50% scale, uh, and then we'll bump it up to a full size scale. I only have uh, the roll that's on there, plus three more rolls, of, right, three? Yeah, three more rolls of uh, one kilograms worth of filament on each, so that's six kilograms total. One, three, three kilograms plus a little less than one uh, on top of that. And I keep, I'm converting to pounds, so it's like six pounds, 6.24 pounds or something like that. Uh, so I need to order more filament. Amazon, as I said earlier, has pulled back a filament shipment already. Uh, so I am a little worried that we're not gonna be getting filament uh, to continue these tests. I have ordered uh, many multiple kilograms of filament um, uh, what is it, like 24 kilograms of filament coming, no, it's even more than that, uh, coming out of Canada uh, that's food grade to do the actual food grade prints, but those are weeks away. And all this stuff happening right now is really messing with my game. Not that I had any serious game to start with, but the project game, come on, get your heads out of the gutter. All right, uh, so it, it's very stressful. Uh, trying to hold it together, but honestly, um, it's really tough right now. It's really tough. We just got to see what the Lord has in store and do our part, and we'll go from there. But I'm going to just keep an eye on those things. I'm going to try to order some more filament uh, to test with while we wait for the large order. They have to build it all. It, it has to be produced because it's a special order. So that's why it's going to take so long. Boy, I hear the printer go in there. It's going to home itself and start printing this one. So... That's it for this video, folks. Thanks for following along. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget to ring the little bell so you get notified when we put out new videos. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. If you'd like to support what we're doing, you can do, through, do so through Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian. Y'all stay safe. Out.